Guys, it's a beautiful day in the bluegrass. It's uh, the bluest sky I've seen all year. The sun is directly overhead, so I'm going to be a little bright. And this dog's going to be a little bright, but bear with me on the video quality because the subject matter today is awesome. Uh, what we're going to talk about is retrieving, okay? And what I consider the foundation of retrieving, which is uh, what's called an inductive retrieve, okay? So we're going to go over here, and the first thing we do with all our sessions, we start it the same way. Come on, Tammy! Is we uh, get out here and we work with our basic physical skills and our uh, common vocabulary. Okay, and what we're doing here is a, it's a concept called greasing the groove. We like to start our sessions off with something that we know the dog is going to be able to do well. Wait, easy. And uh, so the concept there being you start off with success and then you end up with success. That way during the middle part of your training exercise, you know, the hard part, the learning part, wait, easy. Uh, the dog doesn't have a, you know, a mental breakdown because they know, hey, we started off with something easy, it was fun, and this part's hard, but my experience has taught me that Stoney always lets me end the training session on a high note. Wait. And in all the old dog training manuals and books and all the old timers, they all say the same thing about ending your training sessions. End your training session on a high note. Okay, so... Here we are, we come out here, Sammy's got this course perfectly mastered, so we've started our session on some success. Okay, now we're gonna come over here and we're gonna talk a little bit, very nice, give her a little treat, give her some time to eat. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about retrieving. Okay, now retrieving means a lot of things to a lot of different people. You know, for some people, it's just a matter of, they wanna be able to take something, throw it, and the dog fetches it. Oh my gosh, you're such a pretty dog. And the dog comes over and drops it or hands it to them, either one, and they're just happy and they just play that little game, you know, when they get home from school or work. And that's great. For some people, uh, retrieving is more along the lines of they're going to go hunting, you know, and so they want a dog to wait patiently and, until some birds have fallen and the dog go find those birds and bring them back. Some people like to play frisbee with their dogs and some people, what we're working on today, they have a utilitarian need for a dog to retrieve. Okay, so I have somebody that uh, uh, we're working on uh, uh, getting a dog to fetch uh, for a person in a, one of those mobility chairs, okay? And so I got to thinking about that. Me and Eli were talking about it earlier as I was explaining to Eli how we were going to go through these, um, these scenarios. But the essence of all the different retrieving activities is kind of the same, right? Pick that up and hand it to me. And it's pretty easy when you throw the item, like I was talking about in my lab video from, from last week. It's pretty easy. If I throw the, throw the item, they just, they just go get it right? Because uh, they're excited instinctually. They want to chase it. It's real fun. This part here where you're teaching them to pick it up and hand it to you, that's, uh, that's the essence though of teaching them that retrieving isn't just about gamesmanship. Okay? It's also about a learned skill that might be expected to be exhibited even when it's not so much fun. Okay? So one of the things that we do uh, in our inductive retrieve training as we come out here now I'm gonna sit in this chair because I'm real uh, superstitious I make Eli sit in the wheelchair <laughs> and uh, so uh, Eli's holding the camera so I can't make him sit in the wheelchair but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna try to convince this dog to pick something off the ground and hand it to me okay but minus the excitement of seeing this throne so I'm gonna take my little arm here and I'm gonna just put it over there and I'm gonna Try to encourage this dog to go get that and bring it to me and get back over here in this position. Okay, so fetch that up, Sammy. Fetch it up. Oh my gosh, you're such a good dog. So I'm going to bring her over here, get her to, get her to, what well, I'd like for her to sit in this position, but I'll accept standing at first. Get over here. Because we got a helicopter in the background. Now I'm going to do it again. I'm going to be looking for three to five repetitions in this session here. Fetch it up, Sammy. Oh, it's a good dog. Fetch it up. Very nice. So smart. Now bring her over here. I'm going to target her into this way here like this and say, hey, I appreciate it. Okay. Now, the essence of this activity, which is I'm going to point at something. She's going to go get it, bring it back and hand it to me. Okay. We're going to get a 100% compliance rate out of the dogs that we're doing this with before we move off of the mat. But eventually, We'll be able to point in a direction and have the go, dog go pick up items, and then we'll be able to name those items. Now, the names of those items will always be situationally uh, kind of dependent, you know, but you can get a fair amount of discrimination. Sammy, fetch that up. Good girl, you're so smart. She can come around here. Good. 
Very nice. So you see the essence of this activity is pick that up and hand it to me. And so I'm going to get a couple other dogs out and we're going to go through, uh, you know, some other retrieving activities just to show you how, like if you focus on the fundamental aspect of a behavior, then how you choose to branch out and manifest that uh, foundation work, it's, it's, very, it's varied. I mean, you, you have a lot of latitude. So with Sammy, I'm just using her as an example of a dog that can be taught to pick things up and hand it to you if you're in a chair, right? Here in a minute, we're going to get uh, a dog out. We'll do a retriever launcher with them. <coughs> and then, uh, uh, you know what we'll do? We'll get a dog out and we'll play frisbee with it a little bit. And you can see that the, the foundation for all of those behaviors is exactly the same thing, which is, hey, pick that up and hand it to me. Oh, you're so smart. Just get around here, get into the service heel position, and I'm just going to kind of trade her. Oh, it's a very nice dog. Okay, so I have some people here that are watching me uh, video today, and uh, they said, hey, Stoney, that seems pretty interesting. Would you mind going over that again? So uh, I'm going to go over it with a couple of uh, different dogs just to kind of show you how the same strategy, uh, you know, the impl implementation of that strategy doesn't look the same from dog to dog. Like uh, Sammy, uh, you know, she... Uh, when, when, she's, uh, when she's working, like, she has a tendency to be kind of uh, reserved a little bit, you know. Wait. So, uh, I grab my dog. Then I've got a dog in there named Buck, and I'll show you, you know, maybe when you're doing it, your dog might not be so reserved. It might be, some of them are a little bit too reserved. Some of them are a little bit too outgoing. Wait. But you start the sessions off the same way. We come out here and uh, you work on something that the dog's already familiar with. Easy. Weight, grease in the groove, as I said earlier. Easy. Very nice. Oh, you're a smarty. Oh, you're so smart. Okay, so just, just start off. Just start your session off with something that's pretty easy. Very nice. Okay, so this dog's got that on lockdown. No problems. Okay, so he knows what we're going to be working on here. All right, so I'm going to come over here. Uh, and uh, I'm going to sit in my little chair. I'll use a basic targeting technique to get the dog into position here. Now, what you'll notice is like the dogs like mine that are bigger fetchers, the dogs that are really great at the motion exercises, they always have a little bit of trouble with the stay and still and being calm and attentive and polite. And the dogs that are great at being calm, attentive and polite, they generally have a little bit of trouble with the fetching exercises. And so every day you're just trying to take your dog and you're trying to build on their strengths. You know, don't get frustrated. You might come out here and you have an easy time getting your dog to get over in this service heel position. Uh, but maybe your dog doesn't, doesn't show much interest in, in the fetching. Maybe you only get one repetition per session. Or you might come out here and your dog doesn't want to get in the service heel position, but like uh, it wants to fetch a hundred times. You know, that's just the way the, the ball rolls. You know, you just, you have the dog that you have. And so you just have to be patient, you know, and build on what your dog does well. So with this dog, I don't have any doubt that he's going to want to go pick this up a lot of times. Uh, but am I going to be able to get him to get all the way back over here in this position and be calm and patient? Well, that, uh, you know, that remains to be seen. So I'm going to place this over here. And then I'm going to ask him to fetch it up. Hey, fetch it up, dude. Good boy. So I get it. I'm going to see if I can bring him all the way into this position. Good. Very nice. Now, you see how he's kind of crooked there? Okay, that's not exactly what I want but it's not too bad. So remember the concept here, guys, is successive approximation. Each time that we come out here and work on this, I'm gonna get closer to what my ultimate end goal is. So my, you know, in this session, uh, I'd be pretty happy if he would just go get it and get over here, but ideally I'll get him to come over here and kind of line up beside me just a little bit better. You gotta stay real calm. Because this dog, he'll fetch a thousand times if I'll throw it. So I'm kind of trying to take that element of excitement out of the whole process and just work on, you know, doing it because I'm asking him to do it. Fetch that up. Good boy. Get over here, all the way into position. Now that's a lot better. I appreciate it. Okay. A lot better repetition. I'm going to reach just a little farther over there. Fetch that up. Good boy. He's going to come over this way. I'm going to bring him all the way around, get him into that position. And that, oh, it's just about perfect, except I dropped it there at the end. So we'll fix that. Fetch it up. 
Very nice. He's going to come all the way around here. I'm going to reach behind my chair, bring my hand up and right in there like that. Have him hand it to me. Say, I appreciate it. Got to get another repetition in because he can handle it, I think. Fetch it up. Very nice dog. Oh, you're such a smarty. Come all the way around. Boom, just like that. Thank you very much. Fetch it up. Good boy. Come all the way around this way. Sit right there. Now that, now that's about perfect. So that right there is where you should end your session if you get a perfect repetition like that. But <laughs> like all dog trainers, with my own dog, I always want to give one extra repetition. Then this that's bad dog training. Don't do it. Because <laughs> you see what just happened. He just took off on his own and got it and brought it to me. Now, some of you might actually want the dog to come set in front of you because it's much easier to take it out of their mouth. That's cool. And you can do it like that. And then you can have the dog heel, get into this position, stay there. So you place your item. And the only difference is going to be is when I, on this, this re return part here, I'm going to ask him to bring his head straight up like that. And then I'm going to take the item and then I'm going to say, heel. Come on, buddy. Get around here. Very nice. Oh, and now we have Buck. Nice lab up from uh, Florida. Okay, Buck, come on. Now, Buck's an awesome dog. He uh, uh, has a super high energy output. He has a super high endurance, and he has a really quick recharge rate. So from a dog training perspective, uh, Buck is really easy to fool with, you know. But you know how I'm always talking about, guys? Hup, 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 hup that uh, when you're doing your training, you're always trying to get to a point where you're adding speed and precision, right? Well, with dogs like Buck, like it's easy to get the speed out of them because they really love retrieving, but it's kind of hard to get the precision because they don't want to wait. They don't want to do, the, you know how some kids in class, they never want to show their work? That's the kind of dog Buck is. He doesn't want to show his work. He just wants to get right to the fun part. And he doesn't see any reason to be particularly precise, you know? So what I do is I, I make Buck a little tired before we start. So you know how I call this my grease in the groove, right? Well, so with a dog like Buck, I grease the groove before I grease the groove. So I came out here and we took and run him out back until he was a little bit more calm, a little bit more, you know, uh, biddable, right? Now we're going over the stuff he already knows. So this becomes the high point of his, you know, beginning stage of his training where we're doing the stuff he already knows how to do. He does it perfectly, right? And uh, then we'll go over here and we'll start on the uh, specific activity that we're working on today, which is uh, fetching and, uh, you know, well, picking things up and handing them to me while I'm in this chair. You know, and so that's really the key to success, guys. You got to know every dog and make sure that you set up your training sessions. It's not just important the techniques that you're using in your training session. It's important to set up your training session so that that training session is going to help you get the most out of that particular dog. And Buck, this dog here, he loves to retrieve. You know, I mean, I sit here and throw and carry on all the time. But what he does is like he'll come up here and he'll spit this out at me, you know, and 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 like he, he, he'll start jumping up and pawing at you and just being crazy. Well, <clears throat> maybe you have one of these kind of dogs like this that are really excitable and they love to retrieve. But the uh, job that you're training him for, you need him to be a little bit more calm and sedate, you know, or maybe you just need him to be a little bit more calm and sedate just because where you live, uh, he just gets fired up and he plays a little too rough, right? So you can do the same kind of stuff. <clears throat> and so what I'm going to do here is, now watch, you can see, look, see how much more excited Buck gets? See, he's going crazy. He's going crazy. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie... I'm going to tie being calm and attentive to getting access to this retrieving item. Hey, get over here, Buck. Come here. Sit. Stay. Now, so watch. I'm going to show you a little trick of using this arm here. So I'm going to put this over here like this. Now watch what I do with my arm. I bring my arm. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Sit. I just bring my arm over here in front of the dog. And, he can't, you know, it's like I got, a, I got a big stop sign in front of him. Okay. Then I can tell him, fetch it up. Good boy. I appreciate it. Good boy. So let's try that again. I'm going to bring him over here into the heel position. Again, guys, the key here, okay, when you have an excitable dog like this is you have to be very patient. So like Sammy 
she's a little bit on the uh, you know the less excitable side when it comes to retrieving okay so with her i can really try to encourage her uh, now buck he loves to retrieve but so uh, he likes to retrieve so much it makes him kind of hard to control some okay so like whichever kind of dog that you're working with just make sure that you set the emotional tone that's going to help them be successful so i'm going to put this over here i'm going to be very calm because any little bit of excitement makes buck really really get excited I'm going to use my little arm here to keep him in this position, stay, and I'm going to put a count on him in my head, then I'll be like, hey, fetch it up, dude. He's going to hand it to me. I'm going to say I appreciate it. Now, you'll notice I'm not making Buck be quite as precise with these other dogs at first, okay? And uh, that's just because we go from the general to the specific. I've got the attitude with him. I can get the precision as I go along. So I'm going to place this over here. I'm going to use my little arm to keep him from breaking. And then I'm going to say, fetch it up. He's going to go get it. I'm going to encourage him to bring it straight to me and then get in this position. Very nice. Place my retrieving item. Use my little stop arm here. Fetch it up. He's going to bring it right to me and then get in the heel position. Good. Now, with these dogs like Buck that are so high energy, you can get a lot of repetitions in compared to a dog like Sammy. Okay, um, but like, fetch it up. But you got to be careful and make sure that your repetitions are correct because like this dog performs with speed very well. The precision, ah, he's kind of like, whatever, Stoney. Let's just fetch and have a good time. I'm not worried about doing it too precisely. Like Sammy, she does very well with the precision. She just ain't much on the speed. Fetch it up. Good. But notice how calm I'm being, okay? I have to set the emotional tone for Buck. And where you mess up with a dog like Buck is, like, they'll make mistakes and you'll start to get harsh with them. Well, if I get harsh with Buck, these excitable dogs like this, when I put that excitement on him, he just gets more excited and more hectic. So you just have to, like, if these dogs, if they mess up, just always try to keep in mind that they're simply messing up because they love the activity so much. Fetch it up. So don't take it personal. Good. Because these are the dogs right here, guys, that end up being the, the big show-off dogs. Good. Try your best to never fuss at a dog for messing up out of sheer enthusiasm. Fetch it up. Because that's as much your fault as anything. Good. Very nice. Fetch it up. Good boy. Now see, he's starting to do super well. And that's the thing with these dogs. These overachiever dogs, they give you a lot of trouble in the beginning stages of your session. Fetch it up. But if you set the tone, you're calm and patient and persistent. These are the ones that make you look like you're a good dog trainer. A lot of times as a dog trainer, just like most things in life, you're in charge of your own destiny. Fetch it up. Good boy. Okay. Now, I'm going to do one more repetition like this. Fetch it up. Okay. And then show you. Good. Like just because we're working on uh, the dog, like... Uh, paying attention to what I'm pointing at and going over and picking it up and handing it to me. Again, that's the essence of all retrieving, right? Just pick it up and hand it to me. And um, we kind of forego the excitement in this activity a lot because we want to we work on the dog understanding. And sometimes retrieving is just work. It's just, you know, it's just something you have to do because you have to do it. Okay. As you start to master this activity, okay, then you can make it fun too. So watch. I'm going to tell him to stay. I'm going to use my little arm here and I'm going to throw that. Fetch it up. Good. Very nice. I'm going to bring him into position. Very nice. So look, I'm going to use my little stop arm. Stay. Fetch it up. Oh, very nice. Stay. Put my little arm over here. 
Fetch it up. Good boy, Buck. You such a smarty. Heel. Stay. Fetch it up. Oh, good boy. Very nice. Good. Okay, now we'll go out in the field and uh, do something more fun, something more exciting. Now we're going to take a look at how the essence of retrieving translates across activities. Now, so I was up there doing a little bit of retrieving with a retrieving item, a barbell. Now I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do a little bit of retrieving with a frisbee. Now a little disclaimer here. Chasing frisbees is very dangerous for a dog and I do not recommend that you do it. As a matter of fact, I recommend that you don't do it. This is for educational purposes only. Okay, so I'm telling everyone out in YouTube land, never play frisbee with your dog. You just watch me play frisbee with mine. Okay, so I'm gonna break this exercise down the same way I break all my exercises down. I have a dog, he wants to fool with this frisbee. And so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna master catching the frisbee very close to me. And then over the course of time, I'm just gonna add distance to, uh, to, to, to how far I throw the frisbee. So I get over here, I kind of get him excited. I'm gonna bring him around this side of me and I'm just gonna spin this frisbee so he stays low to the ground. Oh my gosh. And when he gets it, he gets it in a nice, uh, like a straight line where he's not liable to, to, to get unbalanced. So I spin it, very nice. Oh, and then every day when I practice this, again, keep in mind, you know, you can have a lot of sessions in a day, but you want to keep your repetition scheme low because the dogs get very fatigued when they're chasing a frisbee uh, because there's a lot of sprinting involved. And so, dang, what a snack. Oh, there he is. Good. Very nice. Oh, you're a good dog. Good dog. Can you see that, Eli? Very nice. Let me move over this way a little bit. Oh, you're a good dog, Bobby Nate. Oh, Bobby Nate's a smarty. Bobby Nate is such a smarty. Oh, what a good boy, Bobby Nate. Oh, you are a fine animal. You are a fine animal. All right, now we're going to transfer that same idea of pick up something or grab something to hand it to me uh, to the dummy launcher. Come on, Sammy, get around here. So I've got George positioned as my bird boy over here. Oh, I got a little tab leash on Sammy just in case she decides she's going to go before she's supposed to go. I can hold on to her. Okay, Georgie. And when Sammy sees it, fetch it up. And there she goes, she's off. <laughs> now you see what I'm saying, it's just, you know, pick that up and hand it to me. Sometimes the thing that you're picking up and handing to me is gonna be a long way away. Oh, good girl, Sammy. Oh, what a fine animal. You're such a good dog. You're so good at picking things up and handing it to me. Oh my gosh. Oh, you're such a good dog. All right. Good dog. Uh, now I'll get you a couple more examples. And now we have dog number two, so I'm going to get him in position. Very nice. Reach down here, get a hold of his little tab leash in case he tries to go too soon, which happens sometimes. Tell George it's okay to shoot the dummy launcher. Hope this dog is watching and has a good idea for when that falls, Mr. No Name. And hopefully he'll run over there and find that pretty quickly. Let's see. Oh, very nice. Call him back to me. Oh, what a good dog! I'm going to kind of bend down here. Oh my gosh, make sure he runs all the way to me super quickly. Oh, you're such a good dog. You're such a good dog. All right. All right, and dog number three. Henry, heel. Stay. Henry. What a good dog. A little bit chubby. Still a good dog. Oh, what a fine animal. Very nice. Very nice. Whoa, get around here. Good boy. Very nice. Stay. And that's all there is to it. I'll see y'all next week.